called the prayer shop. We are faced with the next time as a church. Guess the figure at 11. Whereby you say every year, once a year, we just take a three days or a week tour to Israel. We, we, we can't win anything if we oppose Israel. We are some politician, we criticize Israel. No matter how you criticize Israel, the Bible has put it in black and white. Yeah. He who curses Israel will be cursed by God. Well, I don't want to be cursed. And he who loves Israel will be loved by God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to share with you on the word of God what we are going to share today we are going to share what we have lived what God has done how God has worked with us and after that we are going to pray with you and say if you feel what I have said helps you Hallelujah. You tap into the anointing. Amen. There are times when I I just step back and look how God has walked with us as a family. I say, God, you are great. And that's why it has been in my spirit for all this long that I must have an impartation service. You know, when you enter a house which is locked by you see this padlock, if you enter your inside, someone puts it outside, even without locking it, just walking it, you can't go out. Until someone comes and just pulls it off, you can walk free. Amen. I'm here today to say, God, by your power and your authority, you have given me this time and this day to remove that padlock. No matter what the enemy has locked you there, God must free you. Hallelujah. Some of you are praying. Some of you are fasting. But Kushonja is back. As far as it activates that faith which you have. And the God begins to do something. And build a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. They are more free. Yes. If you want to be free, be free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. I'm not going to free you with this which are Amen. You know, if you, you, you can ask a man like Mr. Mnyenga, I'm talking of something not too far. Around 2006, I could not buy a cell phone from a shop. A cell phone, I'm not called. My good supplier was Mr. Adik. I used to be, he used to be selling second hand phones. This is the man who was selling phones to me. I could not afford it. 2006, I could not afford it. I will say this not because of the pride, but you fully understand something. I think I interpret it wrong because back when I want to do a very good in interpreting things the other way instead of getting the message and giving you a message I could not afford a 
cell phone. I will buy a cell phone, and during those days, cell phones were usually having finance. I don't know what happened these days, I don't hear people crying. I will buy a cell phone from him after some time. It is every virus. It is no longer working. I go back to him. I give him his phone. Two thousand and six. Today is twenty twenty one. Three. No, no, no. I'm going to be very phone now, man. I'm going. If I say the value of my phone, people will want to intercept me out. Because my cell phone is where did that car which is which is which is there. <laughs> but how has God changed my story? Eh? God knows your story. How has God changed our story? This is where we want to start from. Then we say, Basalan, this is how we have walked the walk. This is how God has touched us. This is how God is dealing with us. Hallelujah. Above all, give. That is the first message from the lesson. If you want God to open up your ways, give. And when you give, don't give for pride. Give because there is a necessity. I will always say this. You don't give because you have surplus. Then that's what you're going to give. No. Even when you put your hand into your pocket and your hand goes down because there is nothing, but if there is a need, give. Hallelujah. is unlocking the future through giving. Unlocking the future through giving. Let us look at the foot of the Lord. I am the Lord. Which is the correct word in English? Beg. I will not beg But I will tell you the formula. It's up to you to take it or leave it. But that is what he has meant me to live from a life where I could not afford a cell phone in 2006. <laughs> to a day called today, where the iPhone I use will buy that. Small cover the school. What changed? What happened? What did God do? What is it that we did? That touched the heart of God. Luke 6, verse 38 says. unto you. Good measure. Press it down and shake it together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you give it shall be measured. 
to you again. May God bless the word. Amen. By the way, today is the legend. It's a very special day even in my life. Mr. Man, I was baptized on this day. And I remember I was baptized on the 13th of April, August more than 30 years ago. This is the day I was baptized. Thank you, God, for keeping me standing. Continue to do so. The scripture which I have read says, Give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, not just, not just a measure, but a good measure. when we are talking about the millennium. A Kaya, sometimes when the millennium is finished, you go next door. Mutanga Fikanja Tati a plate and they put it into your pocket. You may think it's full, but it's not, it's not pressed it down. But this Bible says if you give, when it's given to you, it is Number two, it is shaking together. Number three, running over. Hallelujah. The way it goes on to say, for in the same measure that you give, it shall be given to you. Give. A person of color who you give, just keep learning to be a giver because you are the child of a God who can afford you. Don't lose the context. Pick what I say, how it helps you. How it helps you. My brother introduced me to his church. And I've always looked at that pastor as my spiritual father. Business sermon. They said people with businesses come. You know, people when they hear things like that, you run. To make us of us, we were not given money. We were given knowledge. When we arrived, you taught on your weight, which says, What is it that you are doing? Which, if anything bad is about to happen to you, God remembers you and says, not my child. Then he spoke a word of giving and they said, they are intending to buy a farm. I will say it. They want to buy a farm. Which was 121 Hectares. And he said, every time he goes to Israel, you see, 
every time, you know when you touch Israel, you have also touched me. Every time he goes to Israel, he feels there are things in Israel he must transform and build in that farm. I say it. I'm listening. Then he said the church does not have money. We want to raise six point something million to buy that farm. So you people, you are business people. We are looking for your pledges. For that is why. There are people sometimes who are abusing the church to do that because they want to fundraise and make money. But when that prophet spoke. I said, I'm listening, this weight is mine, and I want to give. I want to support this project. From the way they go, when they buy, I want to be there. He said, here is an account number for the church. If you feel you want to contribute anything, just contribute here. God will remember you. When I went home, I told my wife, you know one thing I like about my wife, when I suggest things like this, she does not say no. She says, okay, yes, how can we go about it? Let's go for it. I told her, they are buying 121 hectares. We are going to make a pledge of 1,000 210 so that we, we, we duplicate that number why am I telling you this I want you to see what happened as soon as we gave it's very important to give for a noble cause my wife said yes we went we made the payment 1210 so the number 121 was duplicated. It was in 2019. Before the end of 2019, every time when we go home, Masibu Cafe, there's a place which is always developing nicely. That place, it started being cheap. Now it's very, very, very expensive. So we said, no, we want to go and also get a portion there. We must get a piece of land. So we went there, they were selling some plots. We said, we want to buy a plot here. <coughs> we went, talked to an agent. They said, this is plot number 56. Then we said, how much? Huh? They wanted almost 600,000. We said, no, we can't. But if only you could give us conditions of paying that money and money. The owner of the land said, no. In about two weeks, the agent found it's the plan. I found another plot where they are able to give you the conditions of saying you pay for it in installments for a party. I said, yes, let me go and see it. I went, I saw it, I was happy. We completed the forms. Guess what strikes my heart? When I tried to check what the address of that plot number was, it was plot number 121. We made a pledge when they were buying a farm in Northwest, Contra. That's where they are. And then we paid 1,210. In less than a six months, God opened the doors for us to go and get a plot, stand number one, two, one. If you are failing to understand it spiritually, I'm speaking this under the anointing so that you understand. Hallelujah. Be given to you a good measure, press it down, shake it to you, and running over. 
Hallelujah. <coughs> Today we will tell you something. Why? Till after starting this ministry, we did not start it as a business. We started this ministry as a way of acknowledging God. We told God, you have given us a business. If you make this business end, till now we are not worried about offering a good day salary. That's why from the way to call, this ministry started until today. We have not taken anything from your offerings because our God can afford us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give and it will be given to you. Get an opportunity, Tina, to do something in the church, we take advantage of that. Because we have learned that by giving, God opens the doors. If you don't understand this, even people who don't go to church, go in the start of their lifestyles. If you find a person who is a giver, you'll find that, that you'll find that, that person is blessed. God loves a giver. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You just need to give. Simplify that language, others will not understand. You know, if you are a farmer, if you are holding seeds, if you put a seed here, you jump all this, and then you put another seed here. You jump, you go and put another seed there because you want to cover the field. And then you are planting your seeds, being scattered. When you reap, you reap according to what we have sown. If you plant sparing, scattered, you are going to reap less because you did not utilize the ground. Hallelujah. If you plant one hand, God will bless you according to that one hand. But what I love about the Bible, this word of God, it says, let each person give as is able to. The Bible does not force us to. But what you give determines how God handles you. Hallelujah. That's why that woman who gave some few cents, Jesus said she gave much than people who gave more money. Because God looks at the heart. What is in your heart? Amen. If you give with a heart, we say, this is the only thing I have, my God. I will give you this. God will bless you. But the problem is that most of us, we give everything that God has given to us. And we decide to give one rent. Gia Tantwa King Gubani Ayetenko Fiha Gia Tantwa King If God has loved us as your spiritual parents, we are saying, may God unlock your blessings. May God unlock. I always tell you, when my wife cooks a good meal, 
she does not cook another pot for the children from the same pot. So I'm saying today, tap into this anointing. And we are releasing it to you. May the way God has lifted us lift you up. If you want to remain in the dungeon, you want to remain in the pit, you want to remain in your cells, it's up to you. But as your spiritual parents, we are refusing you to be whole bound in the chains of suffering. May God free you up. Hallelujah. May He free you up. We, 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 are, we are not saying we are better. But if God could raise 10 more people who are in the level that he has put us to be. If God can raise 25 more people, do you know that if God can raise just 50 people who have been put in our level, we can buy from that street to that street. From that street there, that side commissioner to understand, we can take over all this. It's possible. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, are you listening? I, I'm not seeking your, your brains to, uh, and your ears to just open up. I, 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 I want to address your spiritual being. Because once we are together, your spiritual being says yes, your lives will never be the same again from today. If you are running a spasa shop, may it go and prosper. Amen. If you are selling sweets, May it go and be a prosperous business. Amen. If you are selling vegetables, may you go and prosper. Amen. When you preach, may God respond. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Something must be happening. God must touch you. God has touched us. We are not making it a secret that God has touched us. He has touched us. Be touched in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. May you touch us. Now buys an iPhone. What happened? God knows my story. And God knows your story. If we can just humble yourself before. We are living in a world full of challenges whereby when you look at your budget you think it's not enough. It's a demon because the other fraction which you are taking is not yours. And then the devil knows that if you eat it, you won't go anyway. Hallelujah. Let me put it in simple words. They say one of the best ways to kill some rats if they trap you, they just mix the the pap, they take the cement, eh? they put mix with the cement, and then they give the pap. When those rats eat the pap, when the pap is in the stomach, it begins to solidify. Then it becomes a stone. Now the intestines of the red cannot function. The devil has trapped children of God the same way. The devil knows if you eat a tithe, you will never go anywhere. You are tired. It knows very well. So the devil will always come to you and give you a story. Your budget is not enough. Ah. Let Mr. Makata, who is working, give a time. Let Apostle, who is having a business, give a time. Ah, as I love. If you want to be free, listen, learn, and act. Just tell God that what is not mine, I do not do 
eat what is yours. Or we just eat what is mine. Simple. If you decide to eat what is not yours, listen to what the book of Haggai says. Haggai 1 verse 5 and 6. I love the start by saying, It says, now this is what the Lord of hosts says. Consider carefully your ways. That is verse 5. Verse 7 says the same thing. Consider carefully your ways. So as I learned, consider carefully your ways. And the verse 6 says, You have planted much, but you have a little. There are so many people who are hustlers. Eh? You talk about hustlers. Yeah, you, you could be a hustler. You are working so hard to. Eh? If God was blessing you according to how you are working hard, you could be far. You are a hustler. much, but harvest little. You eat, but you but never have enough. Eh? Mutonja, you eat, but you don't get enough. Even when you are still ulap. If someone calls you for food after 10 minutes, you ulap. But you have been eating. You drink, but never have a fear. No matter how you are drinking, you are not getting filled. You put on the clothes, but you never get warm. You earn wages. Listen to this. You earn wages to put it a bed. With holes. You know, you can't oppose God. You may never know the holes of your salary. If you don't obey God, whatever you get, it goes to a pocket which is torn. And how does this become practical? If you are not offering in the house of the Lord, as soon as you give, you don't give. And you say, I want to keep it. You will hear someone saying, Uba You will take that money running to the hospital. Or you will just lose it. Or who's already how Uba Nusega show you the next door? Now you must make contributions. Something will come and take your money. No matter how you want to keep it, it will go out of your pocket. There is nothing to cover, to protect. Your protocols. Give. And it will be given to you. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Uh, sometimes when I say myself, I want to uh, sponsor with my family this Sunday school. Am I matter? I might not be like this. <laughs> Sunday school. Say hamba. And this is why you man a poster. Amen. That's how we are planting an investment. Amen. And I just want to flash back. I'll just flash and show you how God has blessed us. Amen. We have a special blessing to announce of what God has done for us. And when He has done it for us, He has done it for you. And they were saying, if God has done it for us, may He raise many amongst you here who are going to be blessed. Amen. We refuse the spirit 
of one person's success and the others are suffering. Not in this church. If God is blessing us, all of you be blessed to receive. Hallelujah. God has given us our oh, one. There is this song, it is Jehovah. It's a woman, and in a Jehovah. Jehovah. And in a way to be in the way. Jehovah. And in a Jehovah.
hallelujah. You see, this place which is put in red, God is given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you play that other slide? Can you play that? And the slide which we are playing now, I want to thank my son, Sandy. It was prepared by Sandy. Hallelujah. Yeah, can you play for us that slide? Savior. Um, we thank God for 
for everything. And praise and honor, uh, we give it back to him in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we are going to uh, sing our national anthem, which is a prayer um, to you all. Um, when I come here in the everyday work, that's the song that I sing. When we are at home, we are no longer watching scandal whatsoever. When we go home, that's the song that we sing. Even at the reception, when it's a bit quiet, that's the song that we sing. And it's a prayer which we are dedicating to you as the Sire Family Ministries individuals. It's dedicated to all of you. Um, the first, uh, our first read words are for you of what the prayer says. And kindly take it to your heart and uh, it shall be well with you and with your family in Jesus' name. Then we'll play the song later. It says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May His gracious, may He be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. That's our prayer as the Klama family. To you as Messiah family ministries, as individual. Uh, it says, when it goes down, it says, may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. Amen. That's a prayer that we are praying to you, that uh, may his favor be upon you. When it goes down, it says, may his favor be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. When it goes down, it says, May his presence go behind, before you. May it go before you. May it also go behind you. May it also go beside you and all around you. He is with you. That's the assurance that you must have, you have, you must know. When it goes down, it says, um, he is with you in the morning. He is with you in the evening. He is with you in your coming and your going, in your weeping and your rejoicing. He is for you. May you personalize that prayer which we are going to pray this morning in Jesus' name. Can you pray the song? What is we wait for Ivan to pray this song? Can you help with anointing oil if you have it? Please, if we want us to pray for you, uh, this song as it plays is the prayer. I'll just put anointing oil in my hands. You come. We just tap into your hands and you go. Amen. You can play it. We got together with Pastor Chris and Pastor Stephen on Thursday to just go in after the presence of God and try to pin lyric and melody and after a couple of hours it just felt like the presence of God just stopped everything and we wrote a song called The Blessing and it's straight from scripture and it's the heart of the Father over us as his kids and we're going to sing it this morning if that's okay. And this is a blessing over you and your family and your children. So just receive this this morning. Just put your hands out in front of you. Turn your heart to a place of just receiving the blessing of heaven from God himself over you this morning. 